Oh, we are live. Welcome to uh, our ESFP chat today. So we, we ESFP, we call the vivacious stylist, the style celebrator. Um, so, you know, let's talk about why we came up with this name for the ESFP. Well, ESFPs in general um, are high energy, uh, generally optimistic, upbeat, um, highly one of the most extroverted of the eight extroverted types, if you, we can use such terminology. And their sense of style is informed by their sense of fun and their sense of enjoyment with the world. Um, you know, we like to avoid stereotypes as much as we can. So we like to avoid the, you know, pink feather boa, you know, open aired uh, sports car crashing into the fountain um, kind of stereotype that goes along with ESFP. But what they have is this joy de vivre, this, this sense of enjoyment in life. And, and uh, that really comes through when it is applied to their style. And as an SF type, um, we have found in chunking to the four super styles that as one of the SFs that ESFPs have a natural bent towards style. You know, how deeply that goes varies from individual to individual. But when they are interested in style, they often have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's something, it's interesting. So when you say that they're one of the most extroverted of the extrovert types, mm. what do you mean by that, Jill? Well, it's interesting that we often think of introversion as extroversion as, as sort of on off as, mm. uh, you know, it's purely binary terms. And whilst it is not a continuum and, and we, that this is something in the sort of purest type world, we don't talk about how strong you are. It isn't a trait where you have more or less of it. Mm. In presentation terms, if I can use that, in affect, if you like, that there are some of the extroverted types that can appear more introverted, that those two are ENTP and ENFP of the eight extroverted types. They are the two that are often most confused for introverts. There are two introverted types that are often considered more extroverted because they're often very erudite. Um, they have, you know, you know, very expressive in the way they uh, put their ideas forward. Those two types are INTJ, INF. FJ. Um, I know we talked about that with regard to you, Jay, now co-founder with preferences for INFJ, says she will often get that, particularly at conferences and yeah. workshops and things like that, when she's around people, they'll say, you're such a great presenter, surely you're an extrovert, mm -hmm. which she then has a quiet little laugh when she goes back into her room and says, ha ha ha, if only they knew. Let me have a lie much, down. <laughs> that's right, how much energy this takes. Um, and of course, th there are some types that, are, that appear more introverted who who have I at the beginning of their type uh, uh, type codes and some who are, are more appear more extroverted and ESFPs are one of those that are almost never confused for introverts um, that sense of high energy and because um, of that combination that sort of pragmatic um, and values driven combination that comes from their two most important letters um, they present as being highly engaged with life highly observant um, and in the world the spheres that they choose to participate in which will be a curated set of worlds and spheres yeah. it's not as though they're engaged in absolutely everything but they may have more spheres than, say, some of us um, yeah. because they have a wide variety of interests. So when you see them, they, they appear so actively involved and engaged and they, they often have this, this highly energetic and optimistic perspective. And, and you know, I've known ESFPs that are, are going through the worst times in their lives, you know, disintegration of relationships and health issues. And yet when you talk to them, you know, you never know, you never yeah. know that there was all this incredible stuff going on because when the magic ingredient is included, which is engagement with other people, engagement with the world, their energy shoots up and they are yeah. you know, a joy to be around. Yeah. Interesting, because it is one of those things that often you're like, you know, maybe they're not the most talkative of all people, or maybe, you know, like we often associate, you know, gregariousness, particularly, say, with extroversion, um, or, you know, there, there's other sorts of things that we might associate um, with extroversion that we don't always see in an ESFP, but there's certainly that, you know, multiple spheres of life, like, you know, I have a daughter who has ESFP preferences and she has like groups of friends, you know, there's school, there's gymnastics, there's dancing, you know, like it's all her different spheres. Yeah. Um, 
that she has that you know um and then and various other family friends and all that sort of stuff and she'll often talk about how she doesn't really have like so she doesn't think of herself having masses and masses of friends mm. Mm. but she has a few good friends in multiple places yeah um mm. you know so well, we say this in every video and we say it because it bears repeating. Uh, people are not types. No. Um, and what type describes are patterns in our psychological makeup that, that are clearly visible when you are at best fit type. But you are still an individual subject to all of those individual uh, factors which make you you. And they include culture and education and your family setting and your history and the experiences that you've had and all of those kinds of things. So um, all of those things certainly come into play. And you know, what we're describing are um, the characteristics that you can associate under what we would call ideal environments, a lot of type information is written. If this type was allowed to be who they really are, this is what would happen. Yeah. And um, that's really helpful for us if we're trying to understand that type or we're thinking it might be our type. Um, but of course, <laughs> the world does require us to make adjustments in who we are to get along and make sense of things and have relationships and make work work and all those kinds of things. So uh, there are very few types that uh, show up in their pure form because life just requires too many adjustments for that to, to happen and particularly I think you know one of the things you know we might often hear about ESFPs is you know they're often more active you know we kind of see them as a more active type but often it's like well if you've got health conditions or yeah. you know you've got older and you just don't have the same energy you had when you were younger or all those sorts of things where but there's even when you may have those things I still notice an activeness you know, interest in the world or doing things. And it may mm. not be, um, like my mother has ESFP preferences and, you know, like, I mean, yes, they did a lot of bushwalking when young and all that sort of, that, that physical active stuff, but she's also mm. had a very wide variety of interest in like different craft activities, but mm. she never sticks to one forever. Right. You know, there's some people who go, that's my craft and I just do that. I'm a sewer, I'm a knitter, I'm a, you know, and mm. they are that forever. Versus my mother, she, you know, started off spinning, weaving clay uh we've done jewelry making silversmithing um <laughs> paper <Yeah>. making <laughs> like, yeah yeah you know you name it she's probably tried it and she gets enjoyment of it at the time and then she moves on to the next one rather than that kind of i knit and i knit for my entire life or whatever yeah. it might be and this, of course, brings us to, um, you know, the, the potential uh, negative aspects which can show up when we interact with a type that's completely different to our own. And one of the, you know, the things that ESFPs are often accused of is that they don't stick at things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's helpful for us sometimes to be aware that there can be these light and dark threads to how our type shows up and how it interacts with other people. It's not meant as a judgment, but as an observation. And certainly the ESFPs in my world, I have a family member who has preferences for ESFP and he, he, he jumps around um, you know and that's because his interest is moving and his interest is moving at a very fast pace um, and so from that perspective it can be an exciting ride but if stability is something that you seek then this is where those two things can seem at odds with them. Um, and so, you know, my, my brother is the family member I'm talking about. And one of his sons has a preference for SJ. And SJ and SP, you would think are not that different, but man, oh man, do they show up differently. And I know uh, my nephew, you know, when they decided to travel around Australia for two years, you know, Bradley said he, you know, was... He cried for the first day and for the first six weeks just couldn't get a handle on the whole thing. It was just too, too destabilising for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, he wanted to be back at home. Yes, yes. I noticed my, my, my so my parents are the same. So my mum, yeah. she wants to travel around and go places and do things. And my dad, SJ, he just wants to get home after about five days. He's had enough. <laughs> That's right. To just go home. And even though all he does at home is sit in front of his computer and potter around, he yeah. can do that because he's got a laptop. He could do it anywhere. That's right. No, he just needs to be in his own environment. He's very set on his structure and yeah. his, his daily routine, which my mother, she doesn't, like when she comes away without him, she's like, I don't want breakfast and don't make me do anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She wants the open road. Yeah. And, you know, this is what's so beautiful about type is it can really legitimize what is natural for us. Yeah. 
Uh, and of course, we all happily make adjustments when yeah. we're in a relationship with someone that we love and they're different to us. But when we get to truly be ourselves, this is when we often get to see type in its most beautiful form, how affirming it can be of who, who we are. And, you know, my favourite SP versus SJ story is where my brother and his wife and children came to visit us for the weekend. And of course, I'd been preparing for this and bought groceries and I had meals planned. I had I actually written down and you know, that arrived late on the Friday. And on the Saturday, Bradley says, you know what? I've heard about, heard about, heard about these um, baths, these underground springs that are a few hours from here. Let's go. And I, honestly, I card-carrying extrovert, I was speechless. I could barely, you know, formulate a response to this. Like, you've heard about them, but you don't know where they are. You don't know quite how long it's going to take. Plus, I planned all these meals. We can't just, you know, like abandon my meal plan just to run off after some underground springs um <laughs> but for him that's how he rolls you know so the, i that's one of my favorite sj sp differences stories <laughs> so you want to know what happened we ended up staying where we were but there was a change to some of my planning so there you go <laughs> got those meals out <laughs> well i got a couple i snuck a couple in <laughs> and so i think this is one of those things that relates very much back to the esfp style that long-term planning as far as their wardrobe goes is probably not high up on their list of priorities is it no it isn't and here's the thing don't make yourself wrong for it um no. you know long-range planning is great for some you, you go with the energy of your personality and if long-range planning and here's what's interesting just because esfps do not have a strong suit in planning doesn't mean they don't prepare and doesn't mean that they are, aren't ready in the moment because one of their superpowers is this improvisation this ability in the moment to sort of work out what needs to be done said uh, happening pulled together and they can do it in that moment and you, one of the, the reasons you know if this is a preference for you is when you're in your element when that happens when it all just flows and it's natural and somehow you end up with this fabulously pulled together thing that you didn't even know you had half that stuff or it just kind of happened in a way so uh, don't make yourself wrong if, if you're you know not a long-range planner it's not a criticism no, uh, it's, it's just mm. not your way of being. Mm. Um, and, and I think this is one of the things that too that I'll notice with ESFPs, they're, they're often like bringing in something new into their wardrobe. Yeah. This is not, you know, like they may have some favourites that they wear and wear and wear, but then there's also an element, it's like the newness because there's this experiential, they're experiencing the environment, what's going on and everything that's out there. And so wanting to have a part of whatever is currently going on yeah. um, can also be something that's really attractive to them. Yeah, very interested in trends, how they incorporate trends into their style is, of course, deeply individual, um, but they're often very attendant to it because they're, they're the great observers. Um, and often they're picking up things at a level that they're not even sure that they're picking. It's, it's one of the reasons why we use the movie camera as one of the metaphors is that sense of capturing things. And sometimes it's not until you play it back, as it were, that you realise all the detail and nuancing and finesse that's actually being captured. And this is how it is for ESFPs, this uh, sense of capturing yes. so much sensory information that's happening around them. They really are masterful at that. Yeah. So with their style, because they have this ability to be kind of in the zeitgeist at the time, mm. they're less likely to be, you know, get dated in their looks. Mm. But they've also got to be a bit wary that they're not just picking up a trend for the sake of the trend, that everybody else is wearing it so I want it. Mm. And actually looking at, does it suit me? Does it work for me? Is it my personality? All those sorts of elements. Because that's where, yeah. you know, like a bit of wastage can go on. Absolutely. And this is where, again, we can rely on type and the dynamic nature of type. We can we can lean into the world of thinking, uh, which is you know, not, not in the, you know, top two um, functions that come most naturally to ESFPs, but we can draw on some of those uh, skills to just inform our style so that we still have that joy de vivre that's that sense of enjoyment and and fun and optimism that comes with style but we're not letting our style run away with us or we're, we're avoiding some of the pitfalls that can come with uh, that in the moment spontaneous approach to style. One of the things I also noticed with my SFP ESFP friends is that 
I mean, the SFs we call the style aestheticians. They're our super style that they are the most plugged into having a natural ability to see things and make things beautiful. Hmm. But I do notice that there's more of a pragmatic and kind of element with the ESFP about the comfortableness and the practicality mm. that you're know, like my daughter she goes I just don't wear dresses because I can't do handstands in them this is you know, like less so now but when she was young it was you know mm. it had to be purely practical and in Absolutely. fact she was the only girl in her school who wore shorts um even they brought the shorts in at the beginning of the year she started wearing them she was the only girl who wore them um mm. for probably the first eight months Right. Um, and she was going, I don't care that nobody else is wearing them because they're practical <laughs> like, yeah. and comfortable and I can get around in them in a way that I can't in a skirt or a dress, but much less mm. influenced by what everybody else is wearing and that I have to be the same that some other yeah. types might find that they want to be in that kind of be like, be appropriate, fit in. Mm. So less like that, that some of the other, you know, types are like that, but, mm. you know, very much there's this practicalness along mm. with the aesthetic sense yeah absolutely and and uh, the convenience of it as well style's got to work uh, you know it, even if it's um aesthetically beautiful if it isn't practical you know i'm traveling uh, traveling on public transport or walking as a part of my daily commute uh then you know uh, shoes outerwear all of that stuff has got to fit in with all of that um, and so they are highly attuned to, you know, the workability of style. It's a sort of pragmatic beauty, if you like, um, that, that comes with it. But ESFPs are one of the types most likely to reference their, um, their, their friends or their friendship groups when it comes to their style, really anything. They're highly attuned to their environment and particularly the people in their environment. It's a yeah. real feature of the SFPs, both of the SFP types, highly attuned to the people in their environment. Yeah. There's an, a little bit of adventurousness too. They're not scared of trying something new in the way that probably SJ is less likely to want to go. They'll go down the new when they've seen enough other people wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> The ASFPs will be the, the first people who try the new thing. And this is another beautiful thing that type can give us, which is this is an internal motivator. It may, when it, it comes to style expression, how style looks, you may not be able to necessarily say, am I looking at an ESFJ versus an ESFP here? Because the, the presentation could actually have some similarities to it. But the adventurous spirit is really, really different. And this sense of wanting to play. Um, and, and there's, there's a lot of light playfulness to it um, I, I often think of ESFPs as having this sort of natural gift when it comes to style because they aren't a, the word failure doesn't really come into it for them <laughs> and so there are lots of things they're willing to give a go and see how it is and if it doesn't work they let it go yes. um, I think this is another wonderful gift that they have their capacity to to things Below. They come in, they flow out, and there's very little sense of attachment to it. And I think that's a wonderful touch to bring to style. Yeah, that's, you know, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to let things go as well. I mean, <laughs> you know, but they're, they're, they very much live in the moment. And I think that's, that's what I notice the most about ESFPs. There, there's a real in the momentness that you don't, certainly not with my time, I don't live in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in the same way anyway. Um, uh, but which can mean that there's sometimes a lack of like where it's like, oh, do I, you know, like they'll get out the outfit and they'll try on 25 different things and there'll be just clothes exploding in the bedroom and maybe don't get put away because there's not enough time because I've got to go out and do the thing now. Mm. Um, so not always the most organised wardrobes around. And I think this is where having a system, they're very visual people on mm. the whole too, that having a visual system of putting things away can be really important to make it easy. Like, and I think it's one of those things with wardrobing for any type mm. is to, to find a system that is works for you and, and, and your personality. Um, yeah. And most professional organizers come at it with a very much um, out of sight element. That's often mm. something that many professional organizers, they want to get everything, you know, it's like clean services and nothing seen. Mm. Uh, and this, I don't think, works so well with the ESFP. They often need a more open wardrobe. 
um, and open boxes, things they can just chuck things into that it doesn't take too long to put things away. Um, Great point. You know, like to, to make it easy because they want to go out and do things. So if you make it too hard, if you have to, you know, they don't want complicated filing systems. They don't mm. want to have to overdo that. They'd rather spend a bit more time getting things out and mm. less time putting things away. Um, really but it needs point. to be visual. So having things mm. out so they can see them, just attractively displayed, you know, like mm. maybe it's like having your jewellery on a big board or something so that you can mm. see it all, not in little jewellery boxes folded up where I never see it. They'll just never wear it then. Yeah. I think ESFPs are the least likely to stay home and do the ironing when there's an invitation to go out and do something yes. that they enjoy with people that oh, they yeah. like. Um, and so, you know, from that perspective, making whatever system uh, they have work for them in a truly convenient, streamlined way. So it's worth putting in the effort upfront to sort of design and tweak that system. So then you can truly forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, it's like, yes, if there's a party to go to or there's something more fun, like forget about putting the clothes away. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know. Uh, and this is one of the things that when they are at their best, when their, their type is truly allowed to come to their fore, uh, this is one of the characteristics that we notice about ESFPs, their sense of saying yes to what's in the moment, that's calling them. It's not as though it could be just anything. There is a discernment process going on here. They're curating and choosing what those activities are, who those people are, uh, but their natural inclination is to say yes. Yeah. So one of their little kind of tips they can do is actually schedule a bit of time, like go, mm. you know, these things do need to be done, whether we have to mm. do the washing, the ironing, you know, putting the things away, otherwise we can never find things. And then we spend more time running around searching for them. Yeah. So it's getting that, getting the system that works for you, like make up your own system. It doesn't have to be somebody else's system. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then And then actually scheduling a bit of time every week to do that, because that's often one of the hardest things because there's so many other better things you could be doing otherwise. Yeah, and, and when you do have that scheduled time, load in as many sensory experiences that are going to make it enjoyable. You know, music, um, you know, having something that you like to drink, whether it's, you know, hot <laughs> chocolate or a glass of Merlot or champagne with a strawberry in it and, you know, have some scent going or somebody to talk to or listen to a podcast or, you know, add in additional stimulation. ESFPs often can have multiple sensory stimulation going that other types would find so distracting they could not attend to the task at hand. This is often not true for ESFPs who often require this degree of sensory stimulation for them to feel optimised at their best where their energy is floating at the top. Um, and so that's also another thing that um, can help help you determine if you're ESFP. Yeah. We I also had a, sorry, reading go. something I think that Jane said about ESFPs that they have the bright, high, more brain activity looking out the window at scenery <laughs> yeah. uh, than they do trying to read a book or, you know, like, so yeah. it's like they need that sensory. Um, and I noticed with my daughter, if she's not watching a television show and doing something else at the same time mm. and listening to some music, she can't possibly do something as boring as clean a bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and this is true of, of all of the four SP types. Yeah. There, this necessity to, to bring in multi sensory experiences. And if you're not that way inclined, it can seem chaotic and shambolic mm. uh, because you can't see sort of beginning to end. And they're often not following a linear process, steps one through 10 oh. in order, each taking a roughly equal amount of time. It says, you know, as time passes, that's how much activity has occurred. You often don't see that happening. And it can often seem like either nothing is happening or so much activity is happening in an unstructured kind of way that you can't get a grip on it um, but for them they're often you know highly in flow where you know if you ask them to stop they may not be able to tell you where they are but they know things are flowing and they have absolute faith that they'll get where they need to go and this is another thing we can learn from them let's have you know a little bit more faith in them, you know, maybe not as much as they have in themselves, but a little bit more in them because they always get there. Yes. So, you know, there's, there's lots of different things that ESFPs. And the other thing I think is, is they are, because they're in the moment, very easy to make the rash purchasing decision. Yes, this can uh, happen. Mm. Yeah. So you would suggest, you know, giving themselves a, a window, to a break, like a pause, what do you call it, the power pause? Yes, yes. This is a... 
uh, a little technique that I used as a braking mechanism, as in brake on a car mechanism, not tearing something in two, um, when shopping was to institute a power pause, which was a minimum of two hours, no matter how hot under the collar I was for said item, I made myself wait for two hours. And often, if I could get through the two hours, I would just extend it and extend it and extend it, uh, to, you know, to sometimes to the point where it would be weeks that I would have between myself and the purchase. And for someone who is an over shopper, what you want to do is you want to interrupt that automatic buying process. That's the whole goal of it. And for those of us who are very much in the moment, impulse driven, um, you know, highly stimulated by what we see, these kinds of strategies can also be useful just to, particularly if others are involved or it's a financial decision that affects other people, all those kinds of things. Plus just your own wardrobe manageability, making sure it's going to make sense. Um, it helps yeah. just be that little bit more conscious, doesn't it? So Absolutely. when you're making those decisions, because there is that balance of, mm. of like yeah, the new exciting, you know, but then mm. it's like, well, but does it really work for me? And is it going to be the right color? Yeah. And how is it going to work back with the rest of the things in my wardrobe and actually stopping to, you know, and especially because the SFP likes a bit of variety. Yeah. And so, but too much overwhelms anybody. Mm. But it's, it's, you know, and often we're told, oh, you know, go and buy the best version you can find and just have one of them. Well, maybe that's not quite right for the ESFP. Maybe yeah. they need to have a, you know, two, not quite the high end or whatever it might be, because that fits better with their need for variety. So there's yeah. all those sorts of things to come in just, you know, and even having maybe written down your set of style rules or whatever you've developed for yourself, like this mm. is not an externally imposed set of style rules. These yeah. are your own ones. And then just stopping to run through any purchasing decision is, does it fit with mm. your own style rules? And, and even yeah. if it's just enough time to do that, um, that can just help you. And does it fit your style recipe? You know, that can just help mm. you, you know, like because that, that you know, the stores do so much stuff to stimulate us and make our brains, you know, Thank get you. excited about mm. buying that thing. Mm. And particularly when that, you know, probably fires your brain off even more than some other people. Um, it's good to have some processes you can use. And the one thing I would add to that process, particularly for ESFPs, is always circle back after you've done all that analytical stuff, borrowing from thinking, for example, circle back to what excites you about it, because this is part of your style superpower is that sense of enjoyment and so you might have gotten excited about it and then you go through this analytical stuff which will probably not elevate your energy but is a necessary counterpoint of balance but always circle back to what excites you about it because if it doesn't have that element you won't wear it even if it does tick all of those boxes yeah. if you aren't excited about it you just won't wear it so it's always good to come back to where you started in the process and check in on that level of, you know, how much do I love it? How much joy does this piece bring me? Um, now that I've been through all this sort of balancing, analytical, slowing down stuff. And I think that's important for every style. It's like for anybody, it doesn't matter which type you are, you know, what you'd purchase needs to work for you in whatever way that means. But it also needs to be something you love, which is why we talk about making an aim. Does it bring you joy? You know, what do you love about it? If you don't love it, like if it's just it'll do, just leave it there. Mm. <laughs> There's no point in bringing home the, the, the things that are second best, not quite right, all those sorts of things. Because in the end, often then what we do is we overlook the amazing thing because we settled for something that wasn't quite the thing we wanted. Yeah. Now, we have also a question from our beautiful Sue. Um, she's posted a question asking if we could elucidate on... Uh, an element that she's discovering with having preferences for ESFP. I just thought we could read the question out just to make sure we've got it correct before we start answering it. Have you got it up in front no, of you? No, I don't. I've got the current thing up. Okay, let me see if I can quickly find it. Thank you to the NBN for, here we go. I understand that ESFP is one of the more outgoing types who love interacting with people a lot and often have heaps of friends. I like to restrict myself to a handful of friends and one or two as BFFs. I also value my alone time and get quite overwhelmed when surrounded by loud, rambunctious people too much. Can you explain, please, where this is coming from in my type functions? Thank you, Sue. I love this question. Really appreciate you asking it. And I'll have a go at answering it first. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, the short answer lies in your auxiliary function, uh, in introverted feeling. Uh, so one of the things you'll see is attached to ESFP is the word sensitive. And it's because they are a feeling type, but particularly an introverted feeling type. And as we've discussed here, we work with the dynamic nature of types. So feeling is not just one thing. There is extroverted feeling and introverted feeling. And when we have introverted feeling um, in our type code, which ESFPs have, it does have that high sense of attunement um, in terms of, of values and other people. And this is also where we see that sense of curation. So yes, ESFPs are outgoing and involved in lots of things, but it's still a discerned set of things. Those spheres of activity that they're involved with are chosen. Um, it, it's not just, you know, this random selection of things. Anyone who knocks on the door gets a yes. Um, and so introverted feeling is a highly attuned feeling function. Um, I often think of it as being um, more sensitive in a way to extroverted feeling. It, it's attuned to different things because it is about personal values. And also the other thing that comes into play is, is what I call the refinement of getting older. The older that we get, the more experiences that we psychologically will seek out to provide some balance to um, who we are and who we're developing into. Carl Jung, C.G. Jung, the father of psychological types, uh, use the term individuation to describe this process that we throughout our lives will be naturally drawn to things that are not our natural preference. So when you read descriptions of ESFPs, they're often at ESFPs at um, an ideal moment in time um, that doesn't always reflect these dynamic natures of type as we get a little bit older and also some of those things that are highly nuanced because of all those individual factors at play. So I also know ESFPs who find big groups of rambunctious people if they're not their chosen people to be highly annoying. Um, so uh, that in itself, the fact that, you know, you, you find groups of rambunctious people annoying to me would not be a no or, or be in the negative column. Maybe I'm not an ESFP. Yeah. I think too, particularly with any group of people, it's like, you know, if they're my people, like, you know, whatever, like group of people, if you're, my, you know, you'll handle a lot more than if they're not my people. Mm. You know, I think that's important. And I think, you know, as any of us get older, and this is what we hear quite frequently, oh, I used to be an extrovert, now I'm an introvert. Mm. And it's just really, no, you, you know, you just, haven't got the same energy you had when you were younger like you know you can't burn the candle at both ends like you might have done when you were 20 um you haven't got the same bounce back and also just appreciate i think that's one of the things i've noticed in my own life is that 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 the bounce back takes longer and maybe i'm not prepared to uh to to allow that you know like i don't want to have to have that extra time to get over doing that thing and that's something i think that just yeah. comes with maturity for all types um, yeah. is you kind of going, I know there's a cost, there's an energy cost to doing lots of things. And therefore, you know, what is the energy cost and how much am I prepared to bear? Now, that's something I too think that comes with maturity. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we are noticing in our, our paid online membership program where people are learning about their dominant and their auxiliary function is how they really do operate as a, a balancing point and how we can overload if, if all we're ever doing is going to our dominant function. So for, extra, uh, for ESFP, that's extroverted sensing. We never get the benefit of that balancing point, which is always the opposite energy. So if you're, if you're dominant, if you're an extrovert, your balancing energy is always introverted. This is the beautiful, complex, sophisticated nature of type um, is that we need this balancing energy. And so this is where people can have this sense of, but I need alone time. Well, of course you need alone time. Everybody needs alone time, but it's a question of are you using it for balance or are you using it for sanity? Because they're two really different things. Yeah. Introverts without alone time will go insane. Yeah. Extroverts can deal with it, but, you know, they need it to balance things yeah. out. It's a really different proposition, um, you know, what you need alone time for. And if you don't get it, what happens to you? Well, I know <laughs> too with my extrovert ESFP mother. That too much alone time is too much. So she ha she'll go insane with too much alone time. She needs alone time, but 
So mm -hmm. she'll like going, today I do Gardening Australia and tomorrow I do Conversational Italian and then I have book group and then I have, you know, like every day there's some activity with a group of people that she has chosen to spend her time with yeah. because she likes them. Um, but every day she has to get out and about and do something. And, yeah. and, and notice that they're all, it's conversational Italian. Mm. It's like, let's have a discussion about something. Let's do some gardening. Let's, you yes. know, record. Not too our, much I mean, theoretical stuff in there, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. no, very much. But every day is with people. They're people she likes, similar interests. She's not just with anyone. Yeah. Um, she's not just walking down to the supermarket and chatting up anybody she can talk to. Um, yeah. The other thing, too, about the small group of friends, um, I also think of that as a function of age as well. But one of the things you notice with, I would say, all eight extroverted types, um, but you, you see it with ESFPs, is the ease with which they can converse with almost anybody. This, this natural, they're in their element when they're around other people. They're great at making other people feel at ease. They bring this sense of energy, they're often really quite happy being the centre of attention. And again, that that is not a judgment, that is not in any way a criticism because we're drawn to them. They are attractive. We are attracted to them. And it's a positive thing when they are around other people. And again, because they have this sort of improvised sense of being in the moment, they, they don't need to prepare conversation topics or, you know, prepare themselves mentally or any of those kinds of things. They're just so good in that environment, which is why the ES blank P is often great salespeople of any sort, whether that's an idea or an actual product, is because they're just so good at being with this sense of natural flow to them. And ESFPs in particular are just so wonderful with people. Yes. So there you go. There's a little few tips about ESFP style and a little bit about ESFP and their personality and how they approach life and all those sorts of things. Hope you found this interesting. So um, head on over to our 16styletypes.com website. You'll find 16 Style Types reports. You'll also find lots if you want to find more about the ESFP or your type, whatever that might be. Just type into the search bar that and it'll bring everything up that we've, there's millions of blog posts, um, lots of free resources there, as well as your style type report, which just gives you a massive insight into you know, your style, how you approach style, what you're great at, where your challenges may lie, um, all those sorts of things that, um, that you know, that are, that are really useful to understand and to feel that you're right. Often we can feel, particularly with style, that there's something wrong with us. We're not, if we're not like other people, I think that's one of the mm. things that often we can feel with style that there's something a little bit wrong with us or we don't mm. know. And that's where your style's high profile can be really confirming um, of who you are no matter your type we all can approach things differently and there's no right and there's no wrong there's no one that's better than the others because that's often the thing it's like which type's the best type I want to be that one mm. um, you know it, it's 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 something that you know we're all good in our own ways we all have our own little bits of magic and mystery and that's another reason that we do these videos as well, because each of the 16 star types has something to teach the other 15 about style. They're each bringing something unique and valuable into that sphere. Um, and so we hope that by sharing these videos, where required or where you choose to, you can borrow a little bit from whichever of the style types is going to be most helpful for you in, in your style journey um, as it stands now. Well, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again next month. Bye.